He hated himself for almost enjoying what he was doing. It had been depressingly simple to slip past Two Faces guards, to penetrate the courthouse under the cover of darkness, to slip into Judge Halsey's chambers without alerting anyone to his presence. The only truly challenging part had been when he'd found Two Face actually asleep in bed, and even that hadn't stopped him. He managed to bind Two Face's hands and feet without waking him, and had the gag ready in his hand. It would be the gag that would give him away, he knew. It was impossible to get a gag on a sleeping person. The night beyond the window was dark and moonless. The Batman felt that was somehow appropriate. In one swift move, he stuffed the gag into Two-Face's mouth. Then, the Batman stepped back, watching coldly as the man he'd once known as Harvey Dent, the man he'd once called his friend, opened his eyes in horror and began struggling, pulling at the bonds that held him. He struggled for nearly a minute, straining violently at the ties holding his wrists and ankles, thrashing his head, the one already bulging eye seeming to surge all the more in the darkness and in desperation. Harvey, the Batman finally said. Two-Face fell back against the bed, turning his head to the source of the voice. The surprise registered in his eyes, and he tried to say something that was lost behind the gag. I have a problem, the Batman said. Two-Face made another noise. The Batman moved silently around the room, then stopped at the bureau at the front of the bed. On its surface was a silver half-dollar, and he picked it up, ignoring Two-Face's gagged protests. He held the coin between two fingers at eye level, turning it to look at each side, the smooth, worn face that served as the good heads, the representation of liberty. Then, the same face on the other side, only there it had been scratched and pitted, marred beyond all recognition. Bad heads. I think I finally understand his appeal, Harvey, the Batman said softly. Two-Face's eyes widened slightly. There's no judge, Harvey. No court. No jury. There's no law anymore. Do you understand? There's no law anymore. Two-Face didn't move, tracking the Batman's movement around the room. You murdered six men, Harvey. Six men I'd sworn to protect. The Batman moved closer, looming over the bed, glowering down at Two-Face. Six men that I know of, and how many more have you killed who have no one to speak for them? Another six? Twelve? Twenty? He stepped back, looking once more at the coin in his hand. Two-Face's expression had changed, and the Batman recognized it as honest fear. For a moment, it gave him a glimmer of something like satisfaction. There's got to be a reckoning, Harvey, the Batman said. What do you say? Should I flip for it? Good heads, I let you go. Bad heads? Two-Face began thrashing again, then stopped suddenly as he caught the motion of the toss, hearing the sound of the coin, the slight tone of metal as it was struck, the noise of the disc flipping through the air. The Batman caught the toss with the snapping of his fist, looking at his closed hand as if he could divine the result by feel. Bad heads, bad heads, bad heads, the Batman repeated, spitting the words as if they were slick with grease, and then he turned and flung the coin, a move so fast and so sudden that Two-Face's muffled scream didn't begin until the half-tower had embedded itself, edge first into the far wall. The Batman leaned in suddenly, lifting Two-Face by the throat. Never forget how close you came tonight, Harvey, he hissed. Never forget what you almost made me do. Then he was gone, leaving Two-Face lying tied to the bed, pulling desperate breaths through his nose while he tried to force the gag out of his mouth with his tongue, tried to call for help.